Hi! Welcome to Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. Today's video is for those Hermes obsessed people like me because I went to six Hermes boutiques within two weeks as I was traveling in Europe over the holidays. I really wanted to check out each boutique and I'll share everything about the sales associates to what I was looking for and what I saw. And after going through that experience and dealing with the different kinds of essays and the way that each boutique worked, I feel like I kind of got to know more about the Hermes operation and it was less of a mystery to me. So after going to all these different boutiques, I definitely feel like I got the Hermes obsession out of my system for a little while at least because part of the reason why I feel like the brand is so hot right now is because more people have now heard about the brand but they don't know much about it. You know, they keep this mystery surrounding the brand, surrounding how you can get one of the quota bag. Having that mysterious element and not being able to touch the brand it definitely contributes to people aspiring to the brand and now that I have like touched the brand through these six boutiques actually being in stores interacting with all the different essays and seeing all the different things right in front of me it kind of took away the mystery element of it so I feel like I'm a little bit more settled and I don't feel the need to obsessively like look for information about it so I will reflect on the overall experience at the end as well as share a little bit more about how travel in Europe has changed or is still different during COVID times if you are planning to go to Europe soon. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Joanne and every week I make videos about luxury handbags and other luxury lifestyle products. So please remember to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss my next one. Now just to set up the scene, my husband and I decided to go to Spain after Christmas and this was a last minute decision as we were visiting family in Singapore. So I was not very well dressed for the occasion Asian. I had brought a lot of warm weather clothes to Singapore like shirts and sundresses and that was definitely not the weather in Europe at the time so I was a little bit underdressed I would say and after we went to Madrid and Barcelona then we decided to extend the trip and go to the French Riviera and I definitely planned on hitting all of the Hermes boutiques in all of the cities that we visited. So let's get into my first stop which was the Hermes boutique in Madrid. Madrid does have two different boutiques. One is right next to or attached to the Four Seasons and that's a smaller one and then there's a main one on their big shopping road. So the very first day that I landed in Madrid, I tried to dress as warmly as possible but again I only had summer clothes with me so I had on these white jeans and this glitter top as well as my legend sandals and I must admit I must have looked completely out of place because people were in their big winter coats, their big puffy jackets and I just didn't really fit in but I did want to try my luck at getting a bag so I tried to look as luxurious as I possibly could without freezing to death so I think that was another main factor that contributed to my experience because I wasn't really dressed for the weather and looking luxurious at any of the boutiques that I visited. And also going into these trips and knowing that I wanted to visit the boutiques and maybe ask for a quota bag, I also set some guidelines for myself doing research and seeing that there wasn't a lot of stock in any of these places. Although I do agree that if you're a VIP that they do have, you know, Birkins and Kellys for you, but I'm not going to be able to drop a one-to-one -one spend ratio and then ask for the bag so I knew that my strategy would just have to try to connect with an essay, try to build a relationship with an essay in a very short amount of time because I was just a tourist and just trying my luck that way. So I wanted to focus on buying items that I actually wanted to purchase and just seeing if that organic relationship with an essay would develop. At Madrid, it did not. All the essays were ignoring me and you know they were helping others or they were looking at their phone or they were doing this and that. Basically they weren't very friendly. I actually felt the exact same way when I went into FSH. No one was paying attention to me as I walked around the store like making one and a half loops and finally I was just like you know what I'm going to have to 
talk to an SA and be the proactive one. So I went to an SA who was on her phone and I was like, I'm looking for some sandals. Can you help me look for my size? She was like, sure. So I did have a lot of Hermes shoes on my list of wanting to try and maybe purchase as I game planned into all of these Hermes boutique visits. I did ask about a specific pair of sandals and I asked if they had it in my size. She said no. Then I asked her to look for the Avalon baby blanket. So she was like, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Let me go check. She went to the back room and she was gone for a very long time. So I was like, did she forget about me? I was still in this shoe section, just like wandering about. I didn't know if I should just sit there and like look at my phone and look disinterested or like look at the clothing racks, which I did, but it was taking forever. And I was really like, did she really just leave me? And like, what the hell is going on? Thankfully though, she did come back and she did bring this Avalon blanket. So I'm very grateful. I don't know if it really did take her that long to dig out this blanket and find it or if she was just taking her sweet time because she wasn't like super interested in me. I was like, okay, great, I'll take it. And then I guess she immediately guessed that I was there to also see if I could score a bag because she led me over to the bag section and she said, these are all the bags that we have. Now, it's pretty obvious I was a tourist there. She probably knew that, you know, I was gonna ask for a quota bag and she wanted to preemptively not have that conversation. So she just showed, you know, we have a couple sports bags, a couple duffel bags, and that was it. And I was like, oh, thank you very much for showing me. Um, I'm actually going to be in town for a few more days. Maybe I can come back to see if you have any more bags then. She was like, sure, you can try your luck. I did ask for her name because I planned to come back and you know work with her again, You know, really trying to put in the effort to build a relationship with her. I stopped by that main store again and I asked for that same sales associate. She completely forgot who I was. After that essay came out from from storage or wherever she was taking her break, she immediately said to me, we have no bags. Like she assumed that I was going to badger her for a quota bag and she again wanted to just not have that conversation with any tourists. So of course, I was a little bit offended, even though like that was my intention, but I also wasn't going to jump down her throat about it. So I tried to, again, reference our previous interaction saying like, oh, you helped me with some shoes on Tuesday, but we couldn't find my size. And she was like, I don't remember. You're going to have to remind me. So I went with her to this shoe section again. And she was like, let me check in the system. Nope, we still don't have your size in the color that you want. And then at that point, I was just like, there's really no point in me being here. She obviously does not care about me and I should stop wasting my time. While I was waiting around the boutique, I did see some other, I don't know if they were locals or other tourists, but they were dressed very well. You know, they were carrying Chanel bags and wearing all these designer brands. And it seemed like there were S says approaching those customers and asking, oh, can I help you? versus me where like really everyone was walking past me like they didn't even see me so I don't know if it had something to do with the way that I dress. I actually did stop by the smaller boutique next to the Four Seasons and I was treated much better there even though I was wearing really touristy things like I think I was in a tennis shoes and just some really casual clothes. I was immediately greeted. Someone asked if they could help me. I was able to look around. Other essays actually went up to my husband and was like oh do you guys need some help like it doesn't seem like anyone's helping you and my husband was like oh we're just browsing so even though I was reading on online forums that smaller boutiques might have less stock so you have less chance of scoring I also get the impression that the smaller boutiques are nicer and they wanted to help more actually getting the different vibe from the different boutiques in the exact same city. So, you know, I don't think it's a cultural thing. Maybe it's a different kind of clientele that each boutique is used to servicing. Like maybe the big boutique is used to all the tourists going and demanding for bags. And so they are 
meaner about it up front. Ultimately, my husband actually was the one to ask for a Birkin for me and in both locations they said that they didn't have any stock. Moving on to Barcelona, there used to be two boutiques in Barcelona as well but they had closed the smaller boutique and there's now only one main boutique in Barcelona. After entering the Barcelona boutique, I had a few minutes to just kind of look around quickly. As I was entering the middle section of the store, an SA who was chatting with his coworker spotted me and really welcomed me and he was like oh can I help you and he was so nice so I knew that was a good sign that you know he was the one to proactively approach me. My first strategy was actually to ask if they had any petite H items in the boutique because I was saying that this is you know my first time at the store I wanted to something special to remember the trip by and his answer was they don't have any petite age items so then I asked to look at some sandals. That was the first time that I saw the Desire sandal. I really like the design but I think it only comes in white or black. After looking at the sandals for a while I actually told him like oh let me just you know walk around the shop with my husband so we can browse. He was like yeah sure no problem. Um, he wasn't like crowding us or pushing us or anything. It's actually quite a small store so that didn't take long. And then because this essay was so friendly, I feel like there was a connection there. I was like, maybe I should just buy something and hopefully, you know, that will become a bag offer. But there really wasn't anything that I saw we wanted to purchase. I also asked him about the smaller boutique closing in Barcelona and what were the plans. He explained that for Barcelona, Hermes is actually planning to move um, to a bigger location. It was delayed because of COVID, but maybe at the end of this year or beginning of next year, they're gonna have a much bigger boutique in Barcelona. So that's definitely something to look forward to if you're going to be there or if you live there. So it was really uh, easy conversing with him and I asked for a Birkin 25 and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry we don't have any stock, but maybe the best way is to start a wish list because I had purchased the blanket in the Madrid shop I knew I had set up a profile in Spain so I explained that and he said great I'll be able to pull your profile from Madrid. We looked at a few more things and we also asked him for some restaurant recommendations in Barcelona. He again was very kind. After that interaction I did want to you know keep that relationship alive so I did text the number it turned out that it was a generic number with a canned response I was like thank you for sharing the restaurant recommendations it was wonderful working with you I got a canned response back that said you know thank you for contacting the Barcelona boutique we'll respond as soon as possible other than that canned response I didn't actually receive a personal response from him so I feel like because that was a generic number and I got the canned response I wasn't going to be able to foster a personal relationship with this essay. On to Monaco, which was very exciting to be at as a luxury lover. Even before we got to the Monaco boutique, there were tons of Birkins and Kellys just on the street as people were going about their day. Everyone was walking around in these big fur coats. At a brunch location, we just saw like two, three Birkins. At a lunch, there was another like two, three Kellys. So honestly, everyone there is carrying that really high-end luxury. There was also some consignment or some secondhand boutiques that I walked by. So I shot some footage of that. So it was just very interesting to see all the luxury on the street. Um, if you're interested in visiting, I would say it's very cool if you're a luxury lover. But also knowing that going into the boutique, I knew that there would be a lot of high rollers there and just me as a tourist visiting for one day, there was no way I would be able to score a bag, especially when it's low in stock after the holidays, if I wasn't going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars probably. So now for the Monaco boutique, it was very busy. Um, they had, you know, decreased capacity, so I actually had to wait maybe five minutes before someone left and I was able to go in. There was a ton of customers. There was also a lot of work being done. I don't know if they were employees or another vendor, but there were guys dressed all in black moving around the furniture. Um, so they had a lot of furniture displays like sofas and tables that, you know, all said don't touch, don't sit, um, but it seemed like 
they were just rearranging things. I don't know if it was for a seasonal launch, but there's just guys like fluffing pillows and doing this and just like adding to the chaos of the store. There was also cleaners there, you know, spraying and wiping the counters every like 10 minutes. So it was definitely very busy. People were checking out, people were in line to check out and I was mostly being ignored. There was only one point where I was walking down the stairs and there was, I guess a more senior manager or maybe the store manager who was walking up. As she passed me, she was like, oh, hello, like, and welcome to our store. So I felt very welcomed by her, but otherwise the sales associates were very acting busy and you know, like they had more important things to do. So I was hanging around the shoe section for a very long time and I did see all of the new season collection items there. So they already had all the new sandals in the new colors like the pink and yellow Santorini sandal. I saw, you know, purple sandals and they did explain like, yes, this is all the new stuff. I finally approached um, an essay and I was like, hey, can you help me? And she was like, no, actually I'm helping this other person. And she pointed at another lady who was like, putting shoes up on the shelf and was like, go ask her. So I did go to this essay. I was able to try on a lot of the sandals in my eyes in the color that I wanted, but I realized that my foot did not look good in a lot of the sandals. I now don't really want to add any more Hermes sandals to my collection. And working with this essay was also very awkward. You know, I tried to explain my situation, saying like, you know, this is my first time here, um, trying to strike up a conversation, but she was not interested at all. So. I was like, thank you for your help. I'm going to go browse the other parts of the store. So I went back upstairs and I was looking at the home goods section because they did have a lot. I was reading about, you know, the stock shortages everywhere in the world. So I was like, well, if I have the opportunity to buy, I guess I should get it. So I approached another essay that I saw and I was like, hey, can someone help me in the homeware section? She was like, yes, let me grab somebody. So I guess maybe the person I approached was a manager and she didn't help people herself. So she went to grab another essay. So this other essay was very, very nice. I asked her about the collections. She was like sharing, oh yes, this is very popular. No, we don't have this. And I was like, okay, this is the one that I'm interested. Can you see if you have any stock? She was away for a while. So I was kind of like feeling awkward a little bit. But when she came back, she actually came with the essay who I had worked with in the shoe department. <laughs> So the new essay was like, I'm so sorry I have to leave you, but I actually have an appointment, so I'm going to leave you with this essay. So I thanked her for her time, but of course in the back of my head I was like, crap, like this is actually the essay that I wanted to get away from because, you know, she didn't seem interested in helping me, it didn't seem like we had a connection, so like why is she here again? So I honestly don't know what happened there, like I don't know if the new essay was speaking the truth and she did have an appointment, although I did see her helping someone else. So, you know, that might have been completely true. And or maybe the essay who was helping with the shoes saw that I was, you know, interested in homewares now. And she was like, oh, well, that's my client because I had helped her with the shoes and I want to get the commission on whatever sale. So maybe she's the one who asked to work with me again. Like, I don't know what happened there. It was just very strange. And for me as the customer, I just felt like, it was very awkward again because it's like I left you and I worked with someone else and now you're back and I don't know how to talk to you. She was very nice though the second time with the homeware she was you know showing me a couple different options and then ultimately I decided on the mosaic pattern then I did feel a little bit more comfortable bringing up the bag situation so I did ask like oh I'm also looking for a bag and she was like oh we don't really have anything in stock but let me show you what we do have. The first one that she focused me on was a clutch which was in like a pink croc and she was like really describing it I kind of told her I wasn't really interested in the material and then I had her describe to me the other bag that was available but again I wasn't super interested and I just at that point knew that they didn't have anything that I wanted but who knows maybe if I did purchase that croc clutch and kind of showed that I was a client on that caliber that they were used to. Maybe she would have offered me a quarterback, 
that they keep in the back for important customers. I don't know, but I also wouldn't have had the money to buy both a croc clutch and a quarter bag, so I was out of my depth there. She did help check me out. I explained that I had a purchase history in Paris, so she was able to pull that profile so that the stores are connected. She kept on thanking me for the purchase, which I thought was very strange because the impression that I got was that she wasn't really interested in me as a customer from the shoe experience, as well as me turning down the clutch. So I was like, why are you being so nice to me now? But then, you know, she handed me the bag and she was like, okay, bye. So it was a very strange experience in Monaco with that particular essay. I feel like definitely in the Monaco boutique, they are used to that extremely rich client. So they really do not have to sell quota bags to tourists. You really have to drop a lot of money. If you are traveling there and are willing to drop a lot, then there is potential to score a quota bag. The next boutique I visited was the Nice Boutique. And prior to visiting the store, I had done my research and I learned that it was like a franchise store or something. So it means that their system isn't connected to, for example, the Paris and the Monaco system. Them. So I already knew going in that maybe it wouldn't be worth it to buy anything there if I wasn't going to build up my profile in France. So I didn't put as much effort, I guess, going into the boutique. It was quite a small boutique. Um, the essay who greeted me was from China originally. So um, I don't know if that had to do with the fact that she like actually came over and was like, hi, can I help you? Or if it was just her turn to get the next customer. So that is when I first tried on the Colette loafer. And I was really glad for that experience because I got to know which size I needed. They definitely run small, but I was able to try it on in both the black and the gold. I feel like even if you don't have a chance of scoring a bag at a boutique, it's still a really good experience if you have time to go and actually try on things in store because then you find out what you like and you don't like. So this essay, she was very awkward. She didn't talk a lot. I was, you know, trying to explain the story again. Like, oh, it's my first time in Nice. She seemed busy organizing other customer things. I did ask her if their system connected to Paris and she confirmed that no, it was not connected. She showed me their bag wall, which was very small and very sparse. So I definitely do believe that after Christmas time, like there is not as much stock. So I didn't even waste my breath asking for a Birkin because I just knew that wasn't going to happen. I did spot some bracelets that I hadn't seen before. The essay explained that they're from the new collection. They just dropped. She was much friendlier and much more comfortable in the bracelet and jewelry section. So maybe she's just more familiar with those products and is more comfortable talking about them. So she helped me try on a few and I know I said before I'm not a bracelet person um, because I'm always typing and it's always like hitting things. But for some reason in the Monaco boutique and in the Nice boutique, I was like really attracted to the bracelets and I don't know if I'm just going to like break down and buy another bracelet. So after Nice, we went to Cannes and that was the best boutique experience. When I entered, I was immediately greeted by, I'm guessing a manager. So she was like, oh, like, do you speak English, correct? And I was like, yes, thank you for trying to give me good customer service and talk to me in a language that I understand. And then she also immediately asked like, are you interested in leather goods? And I was like, yes. So it also seemed like they were very familiar with and wanting to score bags in their store. But I said, first, I'm interested in looking at some scarves. So she was like, okay, let me find you an essay to help you pick out a scarf. I didn't get very far into the boutique because the scarf counter was right by the door. So that essay was super sweet. I was telling her I wanted to pick out my very first Hermes scarf and she was like showing me all the different collections and she was like, these are the new ones. These are the color varieties. I asked her to pull out like 
five different scarves. She demonstrated how to wear some of them. I felt like I was taking up so much of her time, but she didn't seem to mind at all. She wasn't snobbish or anything. I decided on this scarf right here. After that, she again said, you're interested in leather bags, right? And I said, yes. And she said, okay, let me find you another essay because I'm not trained in leather goods. So the essay that I was working with, she was definitely younger and I feel like, you know, they start off in scars and then as you work with them longer, they trained you in more and more categories with probably leather being one of the last ones. She brought over an older essay who immediately brought me to the leather section and was like, these are all the bags that we have available. They did not have the largest collection on the wall. There was a Birkin at the top shelf, but of course it said display only. I talked to her a little bit about the Birkin. I was like, oh yeah, is that like the 30 size? And I said, you know, I got my first 30 in Paris. I'm really looking for a 25. She said, of course they do not have it. So that was a very short conversation. I went to pay for my scarf. The can store is connected to the same system as Monaco and Paris. So they already had my profile and I just, profusely thanked the scarf essay. I said I wanted to visit Cannes again um, in the summertime because it seemed like she was the kind of essay who I could actually get along with. Hopefully if I go back, I'm able to work with her. Saint-Tropez was the last stop on our French Riviera trip. It seems like more of a summer town, so obviously visiting in the winter, there's not gonna be many people. The Hermes boutique looks very large because it's in its own building, however, Ever, it seemed like a very thin building and even though it looks like three floors when I asked the essay said that there's nothing on the third floor so maybe they just use it as storage basically again I walked into the boutique dressed as warmly as possible out of the summer clothes that I had and tried to look presentable however I still looked out of place. There was two essays who were chatting, but you know, I guess they were the ones keeping an eye on the door for customers to walk in. So they greeted me and they looked me up and down. And of course I did not look very luxurious. So I don't know if they gave each other a look or whatever, but I said that I was interested in looking at bags. So one of the essays led me upstairs, but instead of leading me to the bag wall and the very small counter, she was like, these are all the shoes that we have. So I don't know if she misunderstood me or what happened there, but I ended up having to look at the shoes that they had on display. But really nothing interested me at that point. I was also very exhausted from visiting all of these Hermes boutiques. And there was actually already another customer at the bag counter, which was again, very small. So there's no way we could have fit two different customers there. And that customer was working with another essay behind the counter. I'm very sure that I wouldn't be offered a bag so there was really no point in me spending any more time there. So that is the roundup of my experience at all the boutiques in Madrid, Barcelona, Monaco, Nice, Cannes, and Saint-Tropez. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Obviously I knew going in that it would be a very small chance of me scoring in the summertime when it is tourist season. Some of the French Riviera boutique, for example, the Cannes boutique are willing to offer quota bags to tourists, but I'm sure that those tourists also drop a lot of money and I just wasn't prepared to do that. So I wasn't really disappointed. It was a lot of effort. It was very exhausting, especially when dealing with essays who are snobby or um, not very friendly. But then sometimes you're surprised and there are some really nice essays like the guy in Barcelona and the girl in Cannes. And then it seemed like some of the managers were also very nice people and they want the customers in the store to have a nice experience. I definitely am grateful for the time and opportunity to experience these boutiques myself instead of just being able to read about 
other people's experiences online because everyone's experience can be so different, right? Like in the same boutique, someone could be treated very well and other times it's very bad. Now having experienced both sides of everything in a lot of different boutiques, I know that sometimes it's just chance, sometimes it has nothing to do with yourself, sometimes it's just the essay, and other times it does have to do with um, you know how snobby they are in store like if you're dressed well you'll be treated better it's true in some cases I definitely tried to carry my Birkin and put on a ton of eye makeup um, because you know you have your mask on the entire time so it's not like they're gonna see the rest of your face so you have to kind of make an impression with just your eyes now let's get into just the general travel tips I did submit for tax back in the Barcelona airport the counter is on the departures level before you enter security my Spanish receipt was already done. There's nothing I needed to stamp. All I needed to do was mail it in. Whereas my French receipts, I needed someone to stamp it. And then I put both of the envelopes in the yellow mailbox to get my credit card refund. In France, they are still very strict about showing that you're vaccinated in order to get into restaurants. In Monaco, it seemed like they were even stricter because Monaco only recognizes a vaccination for seven months. That means that if you were vaccinated in January and you don't get a booster by August and you want to go to a Monaco restaurant, they might refuse because they're like, oh, well, your vaccination expired. For France, they only recognize the vaccine as valid for eight months. So you have to get a booster if your vaccine is more than eight months old. But in Monaco and France, because they are so strict about it, they also have the support infrastructure structure at pharmacies so you can convert your US vaccine into a French QR code that they actually recognize or you can take a COVID test which they will also accept for either 24 or 48 hours and that usually costs between 25 and 30 euro depending on the pharmacy. Then for Spain they recognize or maybe they're not as strict about you know having to show an EU vaccine so I was able to show my my CDC card and they're like okay great you're vaccinated that concludes this very long video thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me I really wanted to provide as much information as I could because I know that it is a very big interest in this moment you know how do these boutiques work how can you score a quota bag it is very difficult especially when stock is low um, I do think the stock situation will be better by springtime maybe a around March. The Barcelona essay hinted that they would be getting better stock by the end of January. Um, so hopefully things are starting to pick up stock wise. So for me, being worn out from going to all these boutiques and asking for a Birkin 25, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't need one immediately. Because I carried my Birkin 30 to all of these boutiques and going to all of these cities, I feel like I am just getting into you know, wearing my Birkin 30 and appreciating the Birkin 30 bag that I had and not just thinking about the next one. So I feel like I got that like urgency out of my system. I can slow down and enjoy the bags that I have and I don't need to go chasing down every boutique and asking for a new bag. Please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to answer them for you. And please remember to like this video, subscribe and hit that notification bell and I can't wait to see you in the next video.